Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part three for this news report today. So we're talking about gun control. Giffords Gun Control Group wants $20 million for 2014 election. So a lot of big money. And she's kind of a spokesperson or spokesmodel for um, not just reconstructive surgery and all that, but uh, a victim, a surviving victim of, uh, of a mass shooter. So new gun control group led by Gabrielle Giffords, a former U.S. congressman wounded in the Tucson shooting rampage, wants to raise $20 million for the 2014 elections, matching the NRA's spending in last month's November elections. The husband gave $1 million of his own money to help uh, kickstart the campaign. So uh, next up we have Biden on gun control. Public wants us to act, so they want him to act. Well, they already are acting. They're actors, right? They're just on a stage. Announced on Thursday, it will urge Obama to pursue new gun controls as the first best way to curb gun violence. So take the guns out of people that they deem not fit for uh, carrying firearms. U.S. gun sales hit record highs since Obama's re-election. To the nation's gun lobby and gun rights advocates, the Obama regime is public enemy number one, yet the president has proven to be a boon for gun sales. In the four years since Obama was first elected in 08, an estimated 67 million firearms have been purchased in the U.S. That's more than were sold in almost seven years before his election. With Obama starting a second term in office and anti-gun fervor stoked by the shootings, an unprecedented surge in sales of firearms has taken off. The 2012 of December saw a record-shattering number of requests for criminal background checks from gun buyers. So that's one of my theories as far as these shootings go is, is that it actually was to boost gun sales. And um, White House, Obama not backing down from assault weapons ban. Again, just another article out in the AP propaganda world. The president has been clear that Congress should reinstate the assault weapons ban and that avoiding this issue just because it's politically difficult in, in the past is not an option. This is despite comments from the vice president that we just saw that suggested he and Obama would em instead embrace more politically popular gun reforms. So, like I said, I think a lot of this is just to boost sales. It's also to boost people and the 10% that's being created and engineered, the you know, controlled opposition of court. I'm talking about a revolution type thing to uh, go out and buy guns and support the military industrial complex uh, and uh, forget about the amount of weapons and manpower that, uh, that the U.S. federal government and state government has to, uh, to bring you down. Man's alleged remarks or remarks of Obama's assassination alerts Secret Service. 57-year-old man alleged, uh, allegedly threat to President Barack Obama has been brought to attention of the U.S. Secret Service. The incident took place on the 2nd of this month when an employee at the bank and uh, told police he had overheard the man express a wish for a president's assassination while speaking with another customer. So that's a good comrade, right? Good com comrade commissar to uh, just basically, uh, uh, you know, based in fear. I mean, you really have to be based in fear to think that you actually, that, that Obama really gives two flying shits about you. Uh, you know, you think, you know, when they come in with assassination drones and kill your family members, you think, you know, you think that, um, you think that the people in Pakistan or Afghanistan or wherever, or Yemen, are going to be able to do anything about it? No. Like al Laqui, he's just trying to sue them for assassinating their, their, their father and their, and their son. And um, they can't do anything about it. The judge actually struck it down. Sorry. You get assassinated by a drone strike. Can't do anything about it. But just talking about, about this, you could actually get locked, uh, you know, locked up and have the key thrown away, right? People just totally based in fear. Oh, oh, the president died. What will happen? Life will go on. Life will move on. Just like when they, uh, when Kennedy uh, had bullets ripping through his body because, you know, it was part of a Masonic ritual going down that street. Uh, but also he was starting to become a thorn in their side. So, you know, what happened? LBJ right away swore in. All of a sudden, uh, you know, adult Gulf of Tonkin takes place and bam, you have 500 to half a million troops in Vietnam. Uh, within, what, four or five years, so. No doubt about it, the world will not end if this man dies. But, you know, they like to have a lot of um, uh, security around these people as if they're very important to you. Well, they're, they're actually not as that important to you. They're important to uh, the powers that be that invest a lot of money and time into these individuals and groom them uh, to do what they're told. 
says when the uh, police spoke with the man following the incident, he denied making any threats against the president, saying he was only expressing his dissatisfaction with Obama's actions. After Obama was uh, re -elect or, sorry, elected, the Secret Service investigated a woman, 22-year-old, who wrote a Facebook post about Obama using a racial slur and adding maybe he will get assassinated this term. Florida man who has also used Facebook to post a threatening comment about the president in November was arrested after Secret Service investigated him. That same month, the Secret Service arrested a 20-year-old uh, in Denver for threatening to kill the president during a visit to Colorado. The judge found that that individual was actually mentally ill. Next up, Obama signs law giving himself and Bush lifetime Secret Service guards. The former presidents have to give up their rides on Air Force One, but now they don't have to give up being shadowed by the armed and earpiece bodyguards of the Secret Service as Obama on Thursday signed into law a measure giving him and George W. Bush for future former presidents as well and their spouses lifetime Secret Service protection, right? Because, you know, because the American people just love them so much and the world because they've done so much good and brought so much hope and love and prosperity. The legislation actually rolls back mid-1990s law that imposed a 10-year limit on Secret Service protection for the former presidents. Next up, you have Obama disarming America before the Civil War. Now, nothing wrong with AMTV. I like their videos and stuff like that, and I may actually be wrong. I'm just throwing out my own opinion, you know, uh, which is the way I'm seeing it here because I've seen people leave comments in, in, in different uh, sources in, in my comment board about Alex Jones and that. You know, I'm, I'm not bashing him, like, uh, as far as what's-his-face goes, uh, Mark Dice, um, I think Mark Dice could be more of a shill than Alex Jones. I, I think I think a lot of people are fooled by that because uh, he uses he just uses the f bomb and he just says some real personal uh, nasty stuff towards the guy. My only concern is that people are going to be played like pawns and herded like cattle into this revolution, uh, this civil war, and I don't want that to happen. You know, I'd like to see a peaceful transition. Just the system breaks down and people just voluntarily uh, do what they want to do, set up their own little com communes or tribes or, or um, uh, stateless societies, or if they want to set up their little nation states, you know, with a, quote, democracy or dictatorship, then they can do that. But uh, let's see here. It says, Obama disarming America before the Civil War. I almost think that, what, Obama is actually, by the looks of it, arming America before the Civil War. Actually, he's, they're arming them so that when they do make the threat of coming for their weapons, they really do, uh, that will trigger, trigger the Civil War when they come for their guns. Do you like that? So they're actually arming Americans before the Civil War to give them kind of a, a, a fighting chance, like I, like I said before. Wyoming to preserve the Second Amendment, question mark, in response to the current threats from the federal government of banning firearms, the states are beginning to take action to hold the federal government to its constitutional limits under the Second Amendment. So they sponsored a bill called HB 0104, the Firearms Protection Act. And it goes on and says that um, uh, basically, yeah, uh, in Utah, actually, they're training. They are actually, they try to write a bill in Utah to require uh, their citizens to actually have firearms in the house. But then not everybody was too enthusiastic about it, they said. So then, um, so then they just said it was recommended that they uh, have firearms and carry them. So, and that was in Utah. England warns America, don't let them take your guns. It's a good little video. And neither is the story of a struggle to reclaim rights these honest citizens have already lost. Costly mistakes of trusting in a government that has left them unprotected. Their message to gun owners in America is simple. It will happen to you if you let it. Jolly well could, and they ought to realize that. If they saw what we are seeing in this country, then they'll fight for it. But if you don't do anything, you will lose your liberties and make the effort. Don't be apathetic. Get out there and fight. Learn from our experience and don't give an inch. Your constitution matters. Your freedom matters. The Pericles said it way before me. Freedom is only for those who have the guts to defend it. So here's where the problem lies, guys. Um, that was from the you know the British warning Americans. They got tricked into you know disarming. Is that uh, you saw the guys as far as solutions go? Well, you know, get out there and fight them. Don't give them an inch. You know, politically. Well, it just sucks because how, what are you going to do as an individual, even as a even as a collective grassroots? 
to stop the government from uh, uh, you know disarming you, especially when you have all these false flag psyops going on, such as mass shootings. It just really, really, uh, I mean, God, man, it really throws a monkey wrench into things, you know, because it's not grassroots. These these mass shootings are not representative of everywhere. They totally ignore the gun violence in Chicago, where it's illegal to carry a firearm. In fact, you have to have it locked up locked up in the case in the trunk of your car so that you know of course when something happens you can't actually use it that's common sense gun gun control as they call it but this is the thing you got they're giving you two options these are your controllers you know this is these are the powers that be so giving you two options well you can do things politically get out and and uh, get a grassroots a campaign and elect certain officials or you can get a bloody violent revolution that's why i say it just sucks because you know i don't think there's a political solution and i don't think that there's a that there's a violent solution the only time it should technically get violent is when you just don't participate in the political situation you don't participate in the revolution and you just want to be left alone you dig your little mud hut in the woods and when someone and you draw that line in the sand around you which isn't that big and when people come in it, you kill them or you defend yourself. But not to, you know, fall for the, there's only A or B, there's only one or, you know, this choice or the second choice. Americans never give up your guns. This is from Pravda, which is the Russians, from uh, December 28th of last year. So it says there's, these days there are a few things to admire about the socialists, bankrupt and culturally degenerating USA, but at least so far, one thing remains, the right to bear arms and use deadly force to defend oneself and possessions. So it comes as total shock that to most of the Western readers, but at one point, Russia was one of the most heavily armed societies on the earth. This was, of course, when we were free under the Tsar, which, of course, the Bolsheviks uh, went in there and, and took care of that. It says, uh, weapons from swords and spears to pistols, rifles, and shotguns were everywhere, common items. People carried them concealed. They carried them holstered. Fighting knives were prominent part of many traditional uh, attires, and those little tubes uh, crisscross on the costumes of the Cossacks and various Caucasian peoples. It says, well, those are bullet holders for rifles. It says various armies such as uh, Poland, uh, Napoleon or the Germans or even Tsarist as the Tsarist state collapsed under the weight of World War One, and Wall Street monies found that holding Russian lands was much more harder than taking them and uh, taking was no easy walk in the park but a bloodbath all its own. This well-armed population was what allowed the various white factions to rise up no matter how disorganized politically and militarily they were in 1918 and wage a savage civil war against the Reds, I guess that's communists. It should be noted that many of these armies were armed peasants, villagers, farmers, merchants protecting their own land. If it had not been for Washington's clandestine support of and for the communists, the Bolsheviks, uh, history would have gone quite differently. So I'm just going to stop here because I think I'm going to end up doing five videos, but it's just not going to make sense uh, to try to squeeze this in. So uh, join me in part four. This is GGN. I'm Darko. Thank you.